Louise de Hicks' political career started with her father, who worked his way up in the world from a poor Irish immigrant to become one of the richest men in Boston. Later in his life, he was known as William the Judge Day because of his role as a lawyer and an influential judge. Inspired by her father, she was determined to become a lawyer. Later, however, she began to stray from that path. But after the death of her father, she became more determined than ever to be like him. She attacked her studies with a new fervor and earned her law degree. Louise faced sexism from many white men in college who believed that it was useless for her to be there. In order to survive in such a hostile environment, Louise formed strong relationships between her and other minorities within her college, such as other women, both black and white, black men, and sympathetic white men. Later, she took on a new approach, becoming politically involved, and was then elected as the chairwoman of the school committee. Boston, in the 1960s, had many poor and middle-class citizens. Most people who were not well-off financially resented the class difference between them and those using authority to control them. The Irish immigrants in Boston felt animosity towards African Americans and the civil rights movement, mainly because both groups were persecuted against, but unlike the African Americans, the Irish did not gain rights. They also resented the whites who fought to give rights to the African Americans. The Boston schools were de jure at the time, meaning that they were intentionally segregated. There were district lines drawn to keep communities of different ethnicities apart. Citizens were very dedicated to their communities and often responded violently to other groups entering into their district. Louise Day Hicks opposed the busing proposal intended to equalize the ratio of ethnicities in the schools and fiercely defended the de jure segregation of Boston. According to Hicks, the forced desegregation of Boston schools was undemocratic, un-American, absurdly expensive, and diametrically opposed to the wishes of the parents of the city. Along with William O'Connor, she introduced a bill to stop the desegregation, stating that she would rather lose all of her funding than accept busing. Hicks was quite aware of the separation and ghetto-like conditions in Boston. Hicks campaigned in South Boston, known as Southie, and though she never lived there, she was prepared to defend the people there. She stated that it was not the fault of the school committee or herself if African Americans could not afford different housing outside the ghettos. Her supporters were mainly the lower middle class and poor white citizens in Boston. They found the civil rights movement extremely upsetting, particularly because their race, and therefore segregation, was the only thing that made them superior to African Americans. When integration and busing was enforced, poor whites felt their only advantages and power were being taken away, causing an uprising of the citizens. Irish students living in Southie were especially important to the success of opposing busing. They held citywide protests, which included multi-day boycotts of the schools. They stood outside in mobs and rioted, throwing bricks and other objects in the windows of the buses. Hicks responded to this outrage of Southie citizens by using it to fuel her campaign. She gained massive political support from the white population by exploiting the prevalent racism of that time. Most of her loyalty laid with the Irish of Boston. Hicks encouraged the violent and extreme behavior of South Boston, comparing the federal government that enforced desegregation to the English, who had oppressed the Irish for centuries. She was extremely open with her views on racial topics and the busing crisis, using the phrase, you know where I stand, in her campaign. Though this statement is not profoundly racist on first hearing, it represented that many of her ideas were racist. By saying, you know where I stand, Hicks was able to present her racist opinions without appearing to be a racist. Today, Louise Day Hicks is remembered as the woman who stood in the way of progress.